20 years after winning the Taurus Trophy, the Earl of March's car returns to Goodwood. The three biggest events in the United Kingdom and Ireland were won by Freddie and his team of midgets. And to think that we own one of those cars, or we, we are the custodian of those, one of those cars now, is it, it, terrific. Freddie March, uh, as a young man, uh, went to university at Oxford, met a lot of interesting people there, um, played with the uh, University Motor Club, met Cecil Kimber of, of the MG uh, car company, which was who was currently running uh, the Morris Garages. And um, his first, first event was driving an MG uh, Midget, an M-Type, as they were known then, uh, at Brooklands in 1929. Freddie March uh, left university uh, and, and went to work with, for Bentley Motors. Freddie March would have been enthused by the general competitive nature there and got to know many people involved in the racing scene there. It was through those sort of connections that he, he became so friendly with so many people in the motoring trade and subsequently down at Brooklands. And uh, Cecil Kimber certainly must have helped with MG connections because the, um, this first event that he drove the M-Type Midget in at Brooklands in uh, 1929 his co-driver in that was a chap called Frankie Taylor, who was actually a mechanic at the MG car company. So he was already having, he'd already got good connections with the MG company at that stage. His success there was noted by Captain Arthur Waite, who was the uh, sales and competition manager for Austin's. And this resulted in um, Waite asking uh, Freddie March if he would drive in an Austin 7 in the 1930 double 12, which he did. And um, he came seventh overall, but won his class. And as a result of that, I believe, uh, Waite then got him involved in driving in the 500 race, which was a very big race. Uh, and he was co-driver co with Sammy Davis. And they, between them, won the 500, which was a very big, success. It was common knowledge at the time that there was a sort of open competition between Austins and MGs to become the first car to achieve 100 miles an hour, uh, but they didn't quite manage it until February 1931 when uh, MGs succeeded in exceeding the 100 miles an hour at Montlhery in France. In March, Kimber uh, announced his new model, the Montlhery Midget. It, it later really became known as the C-type Montlhery. And Cecil Kimber uh, launched, uh, had a lunch to launch the uh, new model at Abingdon. During that, uh, during that luncheon, as it was, Cecil Kimber announced that he was going to build 14 for the double 12, which was going to be held at the beginning of May, which wasn't far ahead, um, and must have encouraged orders for these new cars. And Freddie March must have been at the head of the queue, or next to Cecil Kimber, because he, he ordered the first three, obviously. So it was a new model, a new midget in many ways. So Freddie March um, had placed an order for the first three of the Montlhery Midgets and along with the other 14 cars uh, they were all delivered straight to Brooklands. So that was the double 12 race uh, at Brooklands which was one of the biggest 
races of the time. Um, and great success was achieved. Uh, Freddie himself won the race uh, and the car that we have came fourth and the other car came fifth. So that gained them the team prize. So a pretty victorious 24 hours on his first outing with his team of cars. Following that, the next big race in the calendar in 1931 was the Irish Grand Prix uh, held at Phoenix Park in Dublin. So Freddie entered all three of his team cars and across they went to Dublin, where uh, he again was victorious with one of the team cars winning the Grand Prix, and that being the car that we have. And it was a race over about three and a half hours on a road uh, a pseudo road circuit around Dublin and the race was split into two halves of cars up, up to 1500 cc and everything above and everything above included the Grand Prix Mercedes, Alfa Romeo, Maserati driven by people like Campari, Birkin, Earl Howe. These were the great drivers and the great cars of the time and Freddie March his team won the Grand Prix. Freddie must have been so enthused about this team of midgets he, he, bought the cars for the double 12, he'd won, well his cars had won two of the most prestigious racing events of the time. So after that, the next big event was the RAC Taurus Trophy, held in Newton Ards, often known as the Ards TT. So again, he took the team of cars to, uh, to Northern Ireland and entrusted uh, the car we have to Norman Black again, which is probably not a bad idea as he'd won the Grand Prix. and. So after the, uh, again, about three and a half hours racing around very much a road circuit from Dun, uh, Dundonald up to Belfast to Comba, um, Norman Black driving one of Freddie's cars won the race. At the end of the season, on reflection, um, it's hard to think of a more successful opening year with a team of cars the three biggest events in the United Kingdom and Ireland were won by Freddie and his team of midgets. Um, and to think that we own one of those cars, or uh, we, we are the custodian of those, one of those cars now, it, it, is terrific. So we were uh, lucky enough to, um, to get the car about three and a half years ago. Uh, it had been in a barn between two different owners for 60 years um, before then and had been unmolested really and untouched in those 60 years. Um, so we've spent the last three years restoring it very sympathetically, getting it all running again and, and we will now get it back on the racetrack. Well, it's obviously fantastic to have this little car back at Goodwood. It meant so much to my grandfather. It was super successful and it was one of the three team cars that he raced. Well, these little MGs uh, will have played a huge part in my grandfather's overall enthusiasm for, for motor racing. I mean, he was completely caught up in it. His brother um, got him involved, first of all. He raced his bikes at Oxford. He then was, bought these three little cars and in a way took on, took on the world with them and they were really successful and he, he won the double 12 in one of them. Yeah, my grandfather loved small clever cars. He, he was unusual in that way and very ahead of his time I think. So in terms of design, you know, he was very into weight and the whole thing being small and, 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 and clever and quick.
The RAF requisitioned West Hampton Farm and turned it into a Battle Britain airfield. Um, my grandfather was very, very happy about that. He was a very keen pilot before the war and it took a massive amount of the estate up actually. It was a huge area, much bigger area than it is today. Of course they then built a little later on a, a perimeter track around uh, the airfield so that they could disperse the aircraft and, um, and a lot of the young pilots including Tony Gaze uh, raced their cars around that circuit and came to my grandfather and Tony came to my grandfather after the war and said you know you should really turn this into a racetrack. So he and John Cooper I gather came down in a little Cooper, little rear engine Cooper and tried it out and actually went the other way around to start with, but that's how it all happened. Well, Brooklands was very important to my grandfather, obviously. He won some major races there, and it was the first circuit in the world. Having been heavily bombed in the war, there were no, there were no, there were no tracks uh, in England operating immediately after the war, and so my grandfather got going straight away the moment he saw the potential, and um, Goodall was the first track to open after the war, and they all, everyone always felt that the kind of whole feel of Brooklands um, uh, had kind of came to Goodwood in a way and of course we had the famous Brooklyn's Gates here but that whole sort of the right crowd and no overcrowding, the whole social feel of Brooklyn's, the people there, the atmosphere, the thrill of it very much came to Goodwood. We've had a lot of great pre-war cars, Brooklyn's cars over the years at the festival speed and when we did revive we thought there should be a proper race for it so we have the Brooklyn's Trophy which is for those 20s and 30s sports cars which raced at that time and it's always a brilliant race, Fraser Nash's, Bentley's, that sort of thing. Um, and it's an, yeah, it's one of the most I would say one of the most exciting and and um, you know well watched races. In the fifties and sixties, Goodwood was absolutely the kind of heart of British motorsport. Um, it, it really meant something, um, having opened so quickly after the war and it had a very particular atmosphere and I think that very much came from Brooklyn's and everything Brooklyn's stood for and, um, and I hope we can continue, I hope we continue that today.